Hello, this is Ibrahim Nassar with Ozin Engineering. In this demo, I will show you the different methods that can be used to analyze finite phase arrays using ANSYS HFSS. Um, we will be using ANSYS 2024 R2 release here. Uh, we will start this demo by a unit cell model of a simple patch antenna that operates at 30 gigahertz and fed by a coaxial feed from the bottom side. This model was created uh, using the antenna toolkit. Here we created an air box to surround the antenna and touch the substrate from all the sides. And we using uh, lattice pair boundaries to model the periodicity of this uh, unit cell. And from the top side, we're using radiation boundary. The first method to, that can be used to analyze phase array is the explicit method. So here I already created the mo model of eight by eight. And the, the way we created this is basically by copying the unit cell and place the geometry or duplicating it. So this is the traditional approach to analyze the entire array. In this method, HFSS will mesh and simulate the entire structure all together. For large arrays, this meshing process will be compli complicated and the large computing resources will be needed, which will limit the ability of the, of the user to simulate much larger array. The second method is called the finite array domain decomposition method. And in this method, basically HFSS create the mesh of a unit cell, then copy the mesh and duplicate it to all other array elements. This approach will dramatically reduce the meshing time and memory, and the mesh periodicity will be reinforced using this method and thus improves the simulation accuracy. So to set it up, we can copy the unit cell model and place it here by right click on the project and select paste. Let's name it finite array domain decomposition method, so FADDM. And let's open the analysis setup by double click on the solution setup here. So we will be, instead of free meshing the unit cells, we can just import the mesh from the unit cell model. So we solve the unit cell and create the mesh. Then we come here and import that mesh using this project and select the unit cell model. You can use these options to preserve the source design solution if needed. So check that box. Then we go to the variable mapping tab and map the variables by name. And we go to additional mesh refinements, and we're going to ignore all mesh operations in the target design. So we just need to copy the mesh from that unit cell model. So we can go back here and reduce the maximum number of passes to one. So to just perform one adaptive pass here. And the solver that has to be used here is the domain decomposition, which will be implemented to distribute the mesh and access a distributed RAM throughout the network which will allow to simulate much larger arrays with reduced simulation time. Okay, so now we brought the mesh from the unit cell model. Simply here, in this method, we can just create the array by right click on the model and select create array. So we want to have eight by eight to be similar to the explicit method. So then we select the vector so for vector A, let's have let spare one, and for vector B, let's have let spare two. In the explicit method, there was no padding cells, so let's reduce that number to zero to make them identical. And we can check the box here for visibility, and all the cells will be active. So hit apply. So you now simply, you see, it's simple. This, in this method, it's very simple to create the array geometry. And now the model is ready to simulate, so we can just right tight click on the analysis setup and hit analyze. The third method uh, to analyze arrays is the what's called the 3D component array method. So it's similar to the FADDM method. However, the unit cell in this case has to be created using 3D components. It utilizes efficient domain decomposition method here. And the simulation technique will 
enables faster simulation and list memory usage compared to FADDM. And it can leverage again the distributed computing resources. The other benefit of using the 3D component array method is that it allows the user to insert different 3D component unit cells, which will allow modeling finite semi-periodic structures that contains non-identical unit cells for increased flexibility. How do we set it up? We can go back to the unit cell model, and the first thing we have to do is to create uh, a 3D component. To do that, we can go to selection mode of objects. Here, we can hit Control A to select all the objects, then right click and select Create 3D Component. We can give it a name and just hit OK and save it somewhere in this machine. So let's save it here. Yes. So now we have a 3D component of this unit cell. So we go to Project Menu tab and insert an HFSS design. And let's name it to be component array DDM, so C-A-D-D-M. And now we can bring in the 3D component. To do that, we can just right click here on the 3D components and select Browse 3D component. And we can select that 3D component and hit open. And here you can place it anywhere you need by creating a target coordinate system or relative coordinate system. So here, let's keep it to the global one and hit OK. And now we have this uh, the component inserted in the model. Uh, to be able to use this method, you have to change the solution type. To do that, we go to the HFSS menu tab and select solution type. And the solution type here has to be HFSS with hybrid and arrays. And let's select also the model solution type to have them similar to the other models we have here. And click OK. Now, to create the array, it's also very simple here. We can just right click on model and select create array. And we want it to be 8 by 8. And we don't need here padding cells. So the padding uh, here, what it's doing basically, it's, it will be it can be treated as a background material for field calculations. It, this can be used basically to create arbitrary irregular arrays. Um, we can also check the box here for visibility, and then we go to the unit cell tab, and here we select which one would be active, which one would be passive. Uh, so to select them all to be active, we can just click on one and then just drag the mouse all the way down. Okay, so now they are all active. Okay, and we hit to apply. Close that. So now the model is created. So what we need now is to create an analysis setup. So we right click on analysis and we add the solution setup and let's select advanced. And let's increase the number of passes to 10 and the frequency to be 30 gigahertz. The solver again that has to be used here is the domain decomposition to be able to use this method. And in the adaptive options, um, we don't have to change anything here. Here, since we're using the 3D component components in this method, the we the user have three options to be fully independent, balanced, and fully coupled. So what is this basically doing is during the component adapt, the multiple components are solved either fully independent or fully coupled or balanced during each adaptive pass. If you select it to be fully independent, you have the option to perform the fully coupled solve at the last pass. And we hit OK. And we don't need the frequency sweep, so we can cancel this. And now we can solve that. Here for these simulations, you can adjust the number of cores you're using by going to Tools, Options, HPC and Analysis Options and then click Edit. So here I'm using 24 cores for this simulation. 
that. Let's now look at the simulation time for these different methods. So the explicit approach, if we go right click on analysis, select profile. For this 8x8 array, it's taking the maximum memory is 15.3 gigabyte and about eight minutes to solve. If we go to the FADDM method, which has completed the simulation, and select the profile. <coughs> so we see that the max memory is 6.48 gigabyte RAM, and the simulation time is 1 minute and 38 seconds. So that's a significant reduction of RAM of about like a factor of almost 5, and the simulation time of a factor of I'm sorry, uh, it's the simulation time by a factor of almost five, and the RAM reduction is a factor by about 2.3. And let's see now how the componentary DDM method, by right-click on setup, select profile, so the simulation is still running, it's about to be done. Okay, so the simulation here got completed. So we see the RAM is now 5.3 gigabyte, which is a further reduction in compared to the FADDM. And the simulation time is similar here uh, for the FADDM. Um, for larger arrays with more computing resources, you can you will be able to see much larger uh, RAM reduction and much uh, speed up, much more speed up. In, in the simulation time. In this demo, we created a uniform 8x8 eight eight array, but we can, there are different things we can do here to create shaped arrays and change the components. So in the component array DDM method, we can double click on the array we created and we can control, um, we can control the component rotations here. So we can rotate some of the components. And in the FADDM as well, we can create shaped arrays by double click on the array we created. And if we go to active cells, you can select some of the unit cells and make them padding to create any shaped arrays or sparse arrays here. Uh, other things can be done here. So in, in this demo, we created there by right click on model and select create array. But for much larger arrays, you can create the array through a CSV file for speeding uh, up the, the array creation process. So this concludes this demo, and thank you for watching.